York City. Uh, and then, uh, by happy chance, uh, my father met a millionaire who liked him. And uh, the millionaire said, would you like to come out and live on my gentleman's farm in New Jersey? So, so I was brought up on some, somebody's farm. Every night I went to sleep to the music of cows. Understanding of them to write this or that poem. Oh, this poem, this poem really was written back in the early 60s when my wife and I and our children were living in Houston. As soon as the weather got hot, we tended to jump into our uh, Plymouth and roar south to Galveston and swim on the beaches there. Oh, Galveston, 1961. You who in crazy lensed clear water fled your shape by choppy shallows flensed and shaken like a cape who gently butted down through weeds and were unmade, piecemeal stirring your brown legs into stirred shade, and rose and with pastel coronas of your skin stained swell on glassy swell, letting them bear you in. Now you have come to shore, one woman and no other, Sleek panoply no more, nor the vague sea, our mother. Shake out your spattering hair and sprawl beside me here, sharing what we can share now that we are so near. Small talk and speechless love, mine being all but dumb that knows so little of what goddess you become and still half seem to be. Though close and clear you lie, whom droplets of the sea emboss and magnify. In Detroit, and they, they gave me my fee, you know, and then they took me to a, a, a museum, and the museum had Egyptian cats for sale, so I blew all my fee <laughs> on an Egyptian cat. Young Orchard. These trees came to stay, planted at intervals of thirty feet each way. Each one stands alone where it is to live and die. Still, when they have grown to full size, these trees will blend their crowns and hum with mediating bees. Meanwhile, see how they rise against their rootedness on a gusty day nodding one and all to one another as they rise again and fall, swept by flutterings so that they appear a great consort of sweet strings. I was at a, a concert of music here. and uh, having looked at a couple of quartets and quintets uh, playing, I found myself reminded of the way orchard trees look on a windy day. So actually I came to the perception that closes this poem in a backwards manner, seeing first the musical performance and second the, the orchard. and slow worker and so as I often say my chief virtue as a poet and translator is that I'm willing to sit in a chair all day to get two lines that I can bear the sight of. Um, 
I work very slowly with pencil and paper because a pencil has an eraser. And uh, once I've uh, made a thoroughly messy, crossed out uh, version of the poem, I dare to go to my desk and type it out on my old Elsie Smith. And one reason I'm so slow to go to the typewriter is that um, it impresses me uh, if I type something out. What I type out looks almost as if it were printed and published. And, and that uh, can put a stop to my tinkering with the poem. found that I could live a number of lives at once and, uh, and not, uh, not be a poet every minute of my life. And I would recommend that to uh, any student who asked me to live a varied life. Success was never what I aimed for. What I aimed for always read, was writing one more good poem if I could.